Hey y'all. It's the Christmas season, and some of my podcasts and Investopods and friends want to bring you a Christmas time collaboration. You'll hear stories told by creators from the following podcasts. Deep Dark Secrets, True Crime PI, Extinguished, Crimepedia, Walking the Line, Murder and Mimosas, Crime Over Cocktails, True Crime Authors and Extraordinary People, Your Favorite True Crime Podcast with Gavin Fish, and me, Richie Buck from Santa Maybe a Criminal. I'm going to remind you what I always remind you, but this right here is what we in the biz call a trigger warning. So here goes. This podcast contains talk about criminal activity, including violence and murder. It may include a few cuss words, and it's probably not appropriate for your youngins, so you might want to earmuff them or send them outside to play. Now, before we get started, I want to mention three more things. I know, I know, get to it, Buck, but we Southerners like to talk. First up, any opinions in these stories are solely those of the specific creators presenting the story. Suspects mentioned in these tales are considered innocent unless proven guilty in a court of law, and these are real stories about real people. People who experience unimaginable horror and tragedy. The most important thing we can do to honor the victims and the families of these stories is play an active role in our justice system, remain vigilant in our understanding of our surroundings, and support organizations that work to make sure these stories remain the exception and not the rule. And just so you know, some of these stories are going to be long, some of them are going to be short, but you never know what you're going to get until you tune in. Thanks for listening. Hello, we are Cherry and Morgan from Crimepedia. And we are here to tell you about the Christmas murder of Vicky Williamson. Vicky, which is actually Margaret Victoria Wayhora Williamson, but known to her friends as Vicky, was a 63-year-old spinster who lived with her older sister Anne Elizabeth Morley, who was a widow in a cottage surrounded by trees just off Branch Road in the rural village of Barkisland near Halifax in Yorkshire. Now, she had spent 50 of her 63 years in the Barkisland area and she was a popular figure. She was very well liked, very well respected by her friends and everybody who knew her. She worked in the mending department of J.S. Taylor's Bowers Mill, which is barely a quarter of a mile away from her home. Nearly 60 years ago, on the afternoon of Wednesday, December 23rd, 1964, she clocked out of work at 4.50 p.m., 10 minutes early, to start her Christmas shopping. She went home, changed her coat, and set off for Westvale to start her shopping. Two witnesses reported seeing Vicky standing at the bus stop at the junction of Saddleworth Road and Branch Road, waiting for the bus. It was established later that between 5.20 p.m. and 5.50 p.m., Vicky made several purchases from the shops in Westvale. It is believed she then went to Eland because most of her purchases are from shops in that area. The distance from the traffic lights at Westvale to Vicky's home is around two miles, which is at most a 40 to 50 minute walk. It is thought she had decided to walk home that evening instead of taking the bus. Now, two council workers and Ellen District Gritting Lorry said that they saw Vicky in Saddleworth Road just before 7 p.m. She was being followed by a youth that's less than a mile away from her home. Now, she reached a point which was virtually opposite the entrance to a track which angled up towards her home, and it's there that she was believed she was attacked. It is believed that her killer subjected her to a violent assault and bundled her over the wall into a steep, partial wooded area to the east of Branch Road. She was either carried or dragged around 200 yards before her body was dumped in a field close to an area known as Zachariah Wood. Vicky shopping bags, which still contained Christmas presents of books, chocolates, and toys for her nephews and nieces, were found on Christmas Eve in fields off of Branch Road. On Christmas Day morning, 1964, two boys out for a walk on Christmas Day found her body. Over 50 detectives were brought in to investigate, and they scored farms, houses in the area, and slowly pieced together her last hours. Now, they reportedly spoke to over 30,000 people in total. They issued a description of a man aged between 20 to 25 with beetle-style hair, wearing a brown three-quarter length coat, jeans and a white winkle picker shoes. Now, he was seen in Saddleworth Road on December 23rd. 
Police concluded that she had been killed on the evening of December 23rd. She had been partially stripped, but the police were unsure as to whether a sexual assault had taken place, as her body would have sustained damage when it was being dragged to its final resting place. Robbery was unlikely as she only had about pound sixty in today's money in it. Police found traces of glass on the road, which they believed to be wing mirror glass, and considered the possibility that it was a hit and run, and the person disposed of her body so as to not be caught. Despite the best efforts of police, the killer, in all probability a local man, maybe somebody that Vicky knew, remained at large and so remains to this day 59 years later. I think that's a really sad story that she was out Isn't getting it? Christmas presents for her family, for her nieces and nephews. I mean, she's a spinster. She's never been married. So she doesn't have a family and, you know, a, a family of her own, but she has like the wider family. So she's out buying. And I think it's really sad that they found all the Christmas presents at the side of the road yeah. for all of her family. That's it's an awful thing. I think it's clear just from that, the fact that she had no money and the fact that the Christmas presents were discarded, thrown away, that it wasn't robbery at all, right? No, so, I agree. So yeah, someone's agree. looking to, rob, to do a robbery. They're taking, they're taking the goods. Everything. They're running. Mm. Yeah. It is interesting. So um, for, for those of you listening to this in the United States, which I'm, I'm guessing a lot of you are, wing mirror is basically like your, your car's side mirror. So it's the glass in the, the mirror glass that's in your side mirror that they found yeah. on the road. Which to me, that kind of sounds like, yeah, maybe it was a hit and run. Maybe it was an accident. Yeah. She was crossing the street. Someone accidentally hit her. And then, yeah. you know, they, they freak out and they're like, we, I just got to get rid of the body. Yeah. And then they just drag it down the side sort of as soon as where they are. They drag it down the side path, leave her body there and then leave the scene. In the, in the car because if if they went to her and she was quite obviously dead then obviously back then they didn't have the technology that we have today to be able to investigate forensically the area so although they, they did have their ways of investigating things they may not have had the the detailed forensics that we have now and so could it be that it was a hit and run and somebody I mean we're talking about December we're talking about back you know there's no not very many street lights so she would have been walking mm -hmm. probably on the road going up to her house um, and somebody's just not seen her and then just panicked because the other thing yeah. is that there's no signs as, as such that they can see that it was a sexually motivated attack. We know it's not a robbery from what we've seen because they haven't taken her her gifts, so they've just discarded of them at the side of the road. So we know that that's not the case. And the fact that she was partially unclothed could be from somebody dragging her body into where it was where it was finally found. Yeah, and what I found interesting was the description of when they said they weren't sure if she had been sexually assaulted because of, in, in they say because of the damage, yes, that was caused by the dragging. I don't wouldn't necessarily say that that dragging a body would cause damage. Well, I expect you probably would, you probably would if you it's quite a bumpy area. They dra they dragged sort of off over a wall and then. Mm -hmm. and then down sort of a bank into like a wooded area. So I would imagine that there's going to be things like grass roots. There's going to be like thickets, you know, like kind of rough, rough foliage that's going to be there. So I would imagine, imagine if they are just dragging her along the floor, her clothes are going to, she's going to be scratched. Her flesh is going to get torn, isn't it? It's going to be that she's going to be bruised and battered from, from right. that, just from that. No, that's, that is true. Um, I don't know. I just I just have this this sense with this one that it it could have been. I don't want to say something as simple as a hit and run. No, um, I know what you mean though. But she's out. I mean, the, looking at at where she was at Branch Road, it's really the middle of nowhere between these. It's these very two rural. Small, yes. Yeah, these two small towns, and I mean it. It's quite a. It's a decent walk, but where she was yeah. and where she was heading. I wonder if it's the sad case of the fact that she spent all of her money on her gifts. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, wages back back then weren't extortion. You wouldn't get paid an extortionate amount. And her just being a mender, she's probably not on the high, you know, the highest of wages. And so she's gone home and yeah. got changed, gone out to 
buy gifts for her her nieces and nephews and then she's sort of spent all her money perhaps she's thinking okay do i spend the remaining money on the bus or do i just walk because i can just walk um so i'll just walk home and save myself the bus fare and then and that's what's yeah. happened to me this sounds like at mo i think that this was a, a hit and run i think that this was somebody has mm. it's christmas time people are in a rush they finish in work they're driving i know there's not an, a lot of cars around at that time but i i think that it sounds more plausible that somebody has hit her by accident when they're not concentrating or perhaps rushing and they've panicked than it is that somebody has followed her and attacked her stolen her right. goods stolen her purse because her purse was still there so nobody's stolen her her purse is realistically would somebody be following her all that way without being seen by anybody i know that they say that the the two guys in the gritter lorry saw her and that she was being followed by a youth but was that youth did that youth follow her all the way home or is it just that he happened to be walking behind her when they saw him no that's true um and I'm sure at some point, like if you're out walking, what are the chances that at some, at some point someone's going to be walking near you or behind you or or, or yeah. following you? So although, you know, you did see a youth following her, that doesn't mean necessarily that they had anything to do with her, with her death. That's right. It's interesting about the man that they give the description to, and I wonder why why they gave this description of this guy this guy with the Beatles style and we're talking about Beatles as in the the group the Beatles um he had like right. Beatles style hair they think he was between mm -hmm. 20 and 25 could he be the youth that they were talking about um he's wearing a brown Maybe. three quarter length coat he's wearing jeans now he was seen in Saddleworth Road at the same she was also seen obviously in Saddleworth Road and that's where the council workers said they saw her just before 7 p.m. being followed by a youth, and that was less than a mile from her home. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be stereotypical and say, is that the kind of attire that somebody who is going out to do that kind of thing is wearing? Winkle picker boots aren't the most sturdy no. of things, you know? They're quite slippy going out shoes. They're not really the kind of thing here... you would, you know... Here's the thing, too. we got to remember. This is 64. This is, you know, really yeah. the beginning of, what, Beatles mania. Yes. And the old, older generation, they didn't view that Beatles haircut, the Beatles style, to be appropriate, right? They were looking, That's right. They were looked at by, as being a nuisance and being, like, um, inappropriate, right? Yeah. So now you have someone's like, oh, they have a Beatles haircut. So it's one of those people. Yes. So very, is it yeah. is it a is it the sense of you know uh, someone older who who sees someone in that garb and assume that they're up to no good because they listen to that rock and roll music? Very, very. That's very possible. You know, they do slot mm. the, slot the people into the into the categories there. So yeah, quite possibly. I think it's a really sad case, and I think it's a very sad case that has never been solved. I mean, we're talking it's fifty nine years yeah. this year. So 59 years and, and still, there's. I mean, obviously they weren't forensically aware back in the 60s. They didn't have DNA because that right. wasn't found until the 80s. So we know that they weren't as forensically aware as we are now. And mm -hmm. to look back and there isn't going to be anything that we could test now forensically to help with this, which is no, very I sad. Mean, you would be able to go, I, I, I would assume that if you want to take it to the point of, of examining the remains right i, I think yeah. even now you'd be able to tell if there had been some sort of accident which caused her death so if yes. it was a hit and run and she was hit by a vehicle yeah you would see you, you should see some sort of um signs of um whether it's blood force trauma or so. yeah that's right yeah yeah exactly that at least at that point you could say okay she wasn't murdered it looks like it was an accident I don't think there's going to be anything left that's going to be able to tell you if it no, wasn't an accident. I don't think there's going to be anything left that's going to say, okay, well, it was a murder. This is this is how she is murdered, and this is who murdered. Unless, unless you know, a murderer steps forward and says, "Hey, I did it," and this is this is how this is what I did, and you know. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine hitting somebody on the twenty third oh. of December in the dark, and then? dragging their body down and leaving them there but then having to live with that for the rest of your life knowing that it was you yeah. 
it was you that, that knocked her over, knowing it was you that killed her. You could, How could you, could you have a sleep at life, night? Right? Yeah. It could be someone that you're looking at, like, oh, that, you know, that person there, they, you know, they, they're a great person, they're a great man, they're a great woman. Uh, they have no, no faults in life, and, you know, I want to I wanna grow up to be just like them. But they have that on their conscience, right? Can like, you imagine? How, how do you do that? How how do yeah, you have, every they... Christmas you think about it every Christmas surely yeah, it would always be there. Mm-hmm. I See think that's that would awful. be a, that would be something where if if you you would have to have some sort of personality change if that occurred happened to you right yeah you have to you wouldn't be able to like go home and like be non be normal no that's right because you'd always Unless be wondering every time right? every time the door knocks. You'd be wondering, is this it? Have they have have they found mm. you know have they found me out? Yeah. And how do I explain this broken wing mirror, right side mirror of my car? Of my car? How do I explain that? Yes. So somebody, if it was a hit and run, somebody must have gone home with a side mirror, wing mirror that's broken. So somebody yeah. somewhere must know that that Christmas, Dad came home or Mum came home, and. There was damage to the car that Christmas. Yeah. Surely, surely somebody must must have noticed that, or a husband or a wife. You know, you've come home and the husband or wife has has noticed that there's damage to the car. I mean, exactly. if if they, let's say, so we drive we drive on the left. So the if if the person is going up the hill, which we, which is possible, it could be that it's mm-hmm. their passenger side wing mirror that would be smashed if the person is coming down the hill towards her and accidentally hit her which wouldn't be probably wouldn't be right because she would be on the side of the road going up so they would have had to have careered across to her side of the road to hit her if they were going down yeah. so then it, then it would be the driver's side wing mirror so chances are when you look at this possibility the most plausible possibility is that it's going to be the passenger side mirror and that the person would be traveling up behind her and would have hit her because right. they haven't seen her come in that's either that right. or she's walking on the wrong side of the road we're presuming she's walking on the on on the left side of the road up the hill mm-hmm. if she's walking on the right side of the road towards oncoming traffic it's possible that the person has swerved and hit her with their their passenger side mirror again because they've swerved out the way of her so somebody's family member went home with damaged car that oh, Christmas. absolutely, yeah. And with what time of, of night it was, it would have been pitch dark. In yeah, so it would have been, yes. It would have been easier. It would have been so easy to like to not see her until the very last moment. Exactly, yeah. And we don't have a description of what she was wearing, but I, I guess it would have been something mm-hmm. dark because it wasn't it wouldn't yeah. be very easy to see her. So I think from from what we've what we've heard of this story, I think it's very plausible that this is a hit and run incident. But I don't believe that nobody would have seen a car parked up at the side of the road where she was mm-hmm. where she was found. Right. Nobody's reported seeing a man walking other than the, the guys in the gritter lorry, but nobody's reported seeing a man on that road following her as such right. but the gritter lorries have said they saw a guy who was behind her less than a mile from her home so that's quite an interesting observation so once again too that's that's a great a, a great description of a person that you see at night in the dark yeah because white shoes would be quite memorable i think You'd be and able obviously to see like that, you said right? yeah You'd be able to see white shoes, but you wouldn't be able to see, like, okay, this is what type of white shoes they are. You wouldn't be able to say, oh, yeah, Beatles haircut. Well, I don't know. Maybe. If they're in a car, if they're in the gritter lorry and they've driven past them, obviously their lights would illuminate him, wouldn't they? So they would be able to see what he's wearing. And it would be strange if they looked at him and was like, he's following her. Maybe that's just something they remembered. Maybe we're missing something. Maybe this just was Ringo. <laughs> I don't think Where it was, was literally one of the Beatles. Should we should Where we check Ringo? their December whereabouts on that 23rd, night? 1964. <laughs> yeah, 1964. Yes. Yeah. Where were you? What were you doing? Where were you, Ringo? 
Where were you? Well, that's the story of Vicky Williamson, the sad tale at Christmas. She was found on Christmas Day. Um, if you would like to listen to our podcast, we'd gladly have you as a listener. You can check us out wherever you get your podcasts. All you need to do is look for Crimepedia. From me and Cherry, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And a very Happy New Year. I urge you to listen to all the podcasts that are contributing to this project. Deep Dark Secrets, True Crime P.I., Extinguished, Crimepedia, Walking the Line, Murder in Mimosas, Crime Over Cocktails, True Crime Authors and Extraordinary People, your favorite true crime podcast with Gavin Fish, and of course, Santa may be a criminal. Now, remember, always, always, always be nice.